Okay, so you're gonna draw this for pretty much every session we've got. Here are the vessels. This could be any vessel in the entire body. That's the intravascular space. So inside the vessel. Then you have these little capillaries. That's how stuff gets from inside the blood down to the cells. Inside the cells is called intracellular. intracellular. What is the predominant electrolyte inside the cells? You could just guess. Don't guess that one. Potassium. It's potassium. Very good. Yeah, potassium is a home body, and potassium always likes to be at home inside. Like, picture it like this. Like, it's a little house. It always wants to be at home watching Netflix doing its own thing. It does not go out. It does not do anything. It wants to be at home. So if at any point it can open the door to the cell, it's going to do so, and it's going to live inside. Okay? That's why if we look at our lab values, okay, um, what is a normal value for potassium? Three and a half to five. 3.5 to five. And what's a normal sodium level? 135 to 145. Very good, 135 to 145. Does that mean that there's more sodium in the body than there is potassium? No. no. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it doesn't. What it means is when we draw a serum level of electrolytes, we're drawing from the blood supply, right? We're drawing from here. The predominant electrolyte intravascularly is sodium. That's where it likes to live. It likes to live in the vessels. Potassium likes to live at home in the cells. Can I draw potassium out of every cell of my body? No, so when I'm drawing a serum level, there is some potassium in here, but where is most of the potassium? In Inside the cell. the cell. So when I draw a serum level, it's gonna look like, whoa, you have way more sodium in your body than potassium. Not true, it's just that sodium, and potassium likes to live inside the cell and we won't see as much of that. Do you understand? Yes. yes. Okay, so when we say like hyponatremia, that just means we have low sodium. Emia means? In the blood. If I say it's hypokalemia, then that means you have low potassium where? In the blood. So where is the potassium then? Probably in the inside cell. the cells, which we can't measure. Do you understand? Yes. All right. So <clears throat> when we're looking at basic fluid balance, we're going to do this real basic because we will cover it in great detail later, but you have to understand it. So this over here is the arterial end. What do arteries do? Carry blood away. They carry oxygenated oh. blood to the body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what do, uh, what does venous do? What do veins do? To the heart. They take deoxygenated blood back to the heart, to the heart. right? That's why veins yeah. are blue, right? Because they don't have oxygen. Yes? Yes. Okay. So this is the arterial end of the vessel and this is the venous end. All right. So what our main goal here is to get whatever's in the blood down into the cells so that the cells don't die. Okay. So what do your cells need to survive? What do they need to live? What do you need to live? Oxygen. Oxygen. What else? Carbon dioxide. What do you need to live? As you wake up every day, what do you do in order to live so that you do not die? Water. Yeah. We need oxygen. We need water. Okay. What else? You got to eat something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's our energy source? Starts with a G. Ends with a glucose. 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 Good job, everyone. So you need glucose and we need electrolytes, right? Your cells need all of those to survive, correct? Yes. But the majority of those are up here in the blood. So we have to find a way to get them down into the cells and then back up into the rest of the body. So what happens is as your heart pumps arterial blood that's full of all kinds of nutrients, oxygen, water, glucose, electrolytes, it goes into the vessel, okay? <clears throat> and it's going to go down these little capillaries into your cells, it's gonna utilize the water and the oxygen and yada yada, okay, which we'll cover at another time, how it uses those in the cell. And then once the cells are full with all the nutrients that they need in the water and the oxygen and all of that, your body's gonna pull that extra fluid back up into the vessel, whatever it doesn't use, okay? It's like kinda of like your leftovers when you go to a restaurant or something, right? It's gonna take all that and it's gonna go into the venous end and it's gonna go back to the heart to get reoxygenated and filled with electrolytes and we're gonna do glucose and all that, right? So do you understand that basic balance and what that looks like? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Heart pumps. Arterial blood. Okay. It's going to go into your vessel, down your capillaries, into the cells. And then it's going to eat and drink and be merry. And then whatever's left over gets pulled up in the venous end and goes back up to the body to redo its thing. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Back up to the heart. All right. So that's just very basic fluid balance. So we need to talk about what happens when this goes wrong, okay? So this is called the inflammatory process and you will need this for every single disease process in nursing school. Are we clear? Yes. Alrighty then. So what happens 
when your body notes that there is a problem, and I don't care what it is, it could be something as small as a bee sting or something as big as an anaphylactic shock, okay? No matter what happens, your body is going to freak out. It, your body is an overreactor. Y'all know this, yes? Okay, it will always overreact, okay? Everybody has that one friend that like freaks out about something, right? Like, oh my God, I made a Starbucks drink wrong. My life is over. It's probably y'all. <laughs> Just kidding. So your body is going to freak out and say, something is terribly wrong. So anytime in this class, when I say, you guys are going to say, something is wrong. Okay. And you're going to know exactly what's about to happen to the body. So there's an alarm signal that goes out and says, something is wrong. And we'll learn more about that in immunity, exactly what does that. But right now, what you need to know is, oh my God, something is terribly wrong. Okay. okay. All right. So what is step number two? How does your body gonna fix it? It knows that there's a problem. You, you can look on your paper this time. Cause you don't know. Um, step number two. Vasodilation. vasodilation. What does vaso mean? Uh, vessel? Vessel, very good. What does dilation mean? A open y'all can be wrong in here it's okay to be wrong okay just try so that means that my vessels are going to open yeah so here's why so when your body says oh my god something's wrong so if your friend calls you let's say hannah calls you okay and she says oh my god you need to come over right now something is horribly wrong and she hangs up on you okay do you know what's wrong what are you gonna bring with you you're gonna go jump in the car right but are you gonna bring anything with you bring something wow you're not the friend to call <laughs> whenever we need help what are the possibilities that could be wrong you know, what could be wrong with you? Um, Maybe someone's breaking into your house. Yeah. Okay, if that's the case, what would you bring with you? 911. 911. <laughs> You're going to bring some kind of weapon, yes? Yeah. Okay. What if her boyfriend just broke up with her? What are you going to bring? Some chocolate. Chocolate, tissues, <laughs> right? Okay. So there's a million different things that could be wrong and you don't know what it is. And that's what happens to your body. Okay? It doesn't know what's wrong, so it grabs every single thing it possibly can. White blood cells in case there's a infection. It's going to bring platelets in case there's some kind of a bleed, right? It's going to bring all these different things, but it's afraid that it's not going to get there in time. It thinks, oh my God, what if there is traffic and I can't get through this intravascular road? So what it does is it opens the road or vasodilates so that it makes sure nobody's going to be in my way to get to what I need. So it's going to vasodilate or open, right? Yes. <laughs> all right. As a rule of thumb, this is very important to note in nursing school, anytime your body changes pressure, okay, inside the vessels, your body is going to be like, oh my God, something is terribly wrong and the cells need something, okay? So when you have vasodilation, first of all, what's that going to do to your blood pressure? When you vasodilate, when it opens, the blood pressure is going to go down. down. So that's going to cause hypotension. Hypo means low. low. So it's low blood pressure, right? Because tension means pressure, yes? low blood pressure. All right. So we know now that your body has been alerted. Oh my God, something is wrong. It has opened up the vessels so that it has plenty of room to drive to wherever this problem is located. That's going to cause hypotension in the vessels. Anytime your vessels change pressure, your body's going to get a signal that, oh my God, something is wrong. The cells need something and they're going to increase their capillary permeability. That sounds really fancy, but you find your capillaries on this uh, chart here. What does permeability mean? What does something permeable mean? If something's permeable, what does that mean? Yeah, you can get through it. So it's going to open up these capillaries because it thinks, oh my God, maybe your cells are starving or maybe they don't have oxygen or maybe they're, ha, ha. so it's going to open these capillaries wide up like this. Okay. So now all this sodium, potassium, glucose, you know, calcium, anything that's in here is going to dump into the cells because it thinks the cells are in trouble, right? <gasps> Something's wrong. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. So <clears throat> now that we've increased our capillary permeability, these cells are going to fill with stuff real fast, right? And there's going to be a lot of spillage over because it filled them up, <clears throat> right? Mm -hmm. And it dumped all this fluid. What is fluid that gets trapped out here called? Starts the knee. Edema. Edema. Okay. So once we have increased capillary permeability, we number five are gonna leak into the third space because it dumps so much fluid out there. Okay? Y'all with me? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> there's so much fluid that gets stuck in here that there's not enough pressure in your body to pull it back up into the vessel. So you get all this trapped fluid out here. That's inflammation. Do you understand? 
okay? So we're gonna go through each of the steps and then we're gonna apply it practically, okay? Your body says, ah! something, something is terribly wrong, which is gonna cause your vessels to open, open and dilate. So we'll have vasodilation, which leads to blood blood hypotension, yes, which is gonna increase our capillary, capillary permeability, permeability, which then leads to edema. leakage into the third space, which is called edema. Now let's apply that practically, okay? Let's say you get a little tiny mosquito bite, okay? The mosquito bites you, you can feel it, little suckers, right? And your body's gonna say, ah! something, something is, wrong. is wrong. And right in that area, you're going to, vasodilate. which what color is your mosquito bite? Red. Red, because you have vasodilation. Right in this one little area, you're gonna get hypotension, hypotension right? Which is gonna cause Increase. increased capillary permeability, which causes you to Swell. leak into the third space, which what does a mosquito bite look like? Swollen and red, mm -hmm. yes? Now let's take it a little bit bigger. Let's say your patient has rheumatoid arthritis. What is that? <laughs> What's rheumatoid arthritis? Y'all know what arthritis is. So what is it? Swelling of what? Mm -hmm. Joints, yes, that's correct. So it's where they <laughs> swell in all of their joints. It's an autoimmune disorder, yes? Okay, so it's an autoimmune disorder where they swell into all their joints. Autoimmune means you're fighting your own self. You see your own self as, as a demon, right? Yes. So your body says, ah, something. something is wrong. There's something in here that doesn't belong, which is gonna cause you to vasodilate, which leads to hypotension. And that causes? Increased capillary permeability. Which then makes you leak into the third space. So what do their joints look like? Swollen. Big, swollen, full of fluid. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Now let's take something even bigger. Do you know what anaphylaxis is? What, how, what is anaphylaxis? <clears throat> like, you have a massive allergic reaction that causes your whole body to go through this systemic problem, right? So the allergic reaction is what alerts your body. <gasps> something. something is wrong, which causes vasodilation. vasodilation all over your body, which causes you to have massive blood blood hypotension, which leads to increased, increased capillary permeability, which causes you to <sighs> leak into the third space, which what does a patient look like when they're in anaphylaxis? They're swollen and puffy and everything's leaking, right? Let's take something easier that you guys would know, like seasonal allergies. Y'all know what allergies are. Okay, so you go outside, your body's allergic to pollen. So it says, ah, something is wrong, which leads to vasodilation, which causes hypotension, which causes you to increase capillary permeability, which leads to leak into the third space. So how do you feel when you have seasonal allergies? Your eyes are watery and leaking. That's third space fluid. Your nose is... Runny, that's our place fluid. Your sinuses are all swollen. Do you understand how this goes with every condition pretty much in the history of all time? Mm -hmm. And how important it is to understand this, okay? So what are we gonna give for a patient that has inflammation? An anti-inflammatory, right? We could either give something like an NSAID, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, or we could give corticosteroids. And we'll talk about corticosteroids in a bit because that goes along with the stress response. And that can explain to you why we would give corticosteroids for a patient in massive inflammation. So do you understand the basics of the inflammatory response and how important it is to note for nursing school? Yeah, so, but for like hypotension, it won't be like, <coughs> like what, I know like when you get a mosquito bite, it's not gonna be, you're not gonna have like. No, it won't be systemic, that would be local. Okay. So there's a, that's a good question. There's such thing as local inflammation and there is systemic. So local would be like a mosquito bite or maybe you burned yourself on your curling iron or something. Let's say you do burn yourself on your curling iron and you get a big blister. What does it look like the next day? Red. It's red and it's full of fluid, yeah. right? It forms a big blister bubble. That's third space fluid. Okay. Okay. But it can be systemic as an anaphylaxis. So patients that are in anaphylaxis, their blood pressure goes so low. People think that they die just from bronchoconstriction. They don't. A lot of patients die because their blood pressure goes so low that they start pulling fluid from their arms and legs to keep blood central, right? Okay. And then the next thing your body does, if it runs out of pressure, let's say a patient with anaphylaxis, their blood pressure is 60 over 30. It starts pulling fluid away from your kidneys next, and that is called shock. Okay. Anytime blood is so low, either your pressure or your amount of blood is so low that it has to pull away from your, from your kidneys, that's called shock. And so those patients will go into anaphylactic shock. Okay. And they'll actually end up dying from kidney failure and MODS, which is multi-organ dysfunction syndrome. All their organs will start to die. It's not always the bronchoconstriction that kills someone with an allergic reaction. Okay. okay? So do you understand how important it is to note that? Yes. What's the worst case scenario of hypotension? I just told you. Uh, it pulls from the kidneys. Yeah, so that is called? Uh, shock. Shock. Okay, so worst case scenario of hypotension is? Shock, and that can happen to anybody that has a massive inflammatory response. 
This a lot of times too is how burns patients will die, right? They have, a, if they've been burned systemically and their body's like, <gasps> something is horribly wrong, they third space all of their fluid, right? And so their blood pressure may be 60 over 30. And what's gonna happen next? It'll pull from the kidneys. It'll pull from the kidneys. It'll pull from extremities first, we know that, yeah. right? And then it will pull for the kidneys and that's called? Shock. Shock, and so that patient will go into hypovolemic shock. Do you understand? Yes. So this process is so super important for all of nursing school for you to understand. Do we got it? Yes. Mm -hmm.